Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll just give people a few minutes to filter in um, because, you know, like, why not, right? Because that's the whole point. Um, we're going to be showing some, we got some uh, Seth, Seth Atwood, our developer, our developer, you know, because we, we, we own him. Um, <laughs> gave us some, he keeps uh, him in the basement. Uh, gave us some screenshots and stuff, so I can, I can share that once people are here. Well, while we're waiting, I'd like to shout out to Dave, who is standing <laughs> right now. He's the one out of all three of us that is actually um, healthy <laughs> right now. He's standing up and, and doing this. I've bastards. so wanted to... What would you say, Dave? You lazy bastards. I know. I've so wanted to and convert And Sean got my... so excited. He was like, um, Dave's standing. And it reminded <laughs> me of this. Um, my uh, stepdad used to have a coon hound. And um, he would say things like, "Oh, she's like she stands around. She likes to do things. Like he'd, he'd talk and dog talk to her. She likes she breathes air." And my mom always said that dog gets so much complimentary, you know, so much praise for doing nothing. Well, no, it's that's something. Up. No, it is something. It just reminded me of that. You were so happy. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. I'm not. I'm not equipped. Like I've, I've, I mean, I've stood a lot today. In fact, because I was so sick last week that I stood, I think, too much today and yesterday, and my legs started trembling a lot. <laughs> so. Do you think? Do you think? I, I think it's time to ask a question that so many people have asked, and that's: Do you think we're on the dawn of a new Dave? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I, I, I do. Because there I, I was a lot of podcast Dave activity. Dawning where dawning of dawn of the, of the, the parallel, of the Dave a, yeah. a parallel podcast. So we've got the Walking Dave. I think Dawn of the Dave would be another. Dawn of the Dave. Dave. He podcast. he was just like I I recorded because we were talking about the Smarter Artist podcast. It was like yeah I I put twelve of those in the folder. <laughs> Let's do Walking Dave twice a week. So I think we got to do that. That was awesome, and I do love that the first Walking Dave, which I listened to yesterday while walking. Um, is in the car. <laughs> there's, something, there's something. There's something so awesome about that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and begin because I'm noticing people starting to to come in. So uh, I, I don't know where to begin with on this. The, the pod. I don't know how much you guys know because we haven't really told you a lot. We've talked about it a little on the podcast. Um, the self-publishing podcast that we are recording this Friday, which is the 9th of October. Uh, the the live version will be with Seth Atwood, and um, he's we're going to talk about the app, so there'll be more detail there. But we haven't given a lot of like what's in it, what it's going to be, largely because we didn't know, right? So where do we begin? Well, I think the original premise of the app was just what would be the perfect app for us, um, because we this is what we do for a living, you know. T we tell stories, and the way we do it now, it's it's. It's really fun, but it's a little bit awkward. Um, we use Scrivener for everything. So we're creating all the buckets and our characters and our, our casting. And I'm doing something right now um, that, you know, it requires, a, it has a kind of a wide cast, actually. And um, so there are a lot of characters. And it's just, it gets, it gets unwieldy. And we want something that is, there's, there's a distinct difference between the pre-writing process and the writing process. And I think that the more fluid the pre-writing process is, the better the, the writing process is. But they're not the same thing. And I don't think that they require the same tool. Now, Scrivener has been fantastic. I think Scrivener is the best writer's tool there is, period. Um, but I think it is more for, for drafting, and it does an exceptional job uh, you know, of, of having the different buckets and, and enabling you to do a lot of the things that we do. But there's got to be a better solution. So... Um, I was reading a uh, an interview with the guy who created uh, Scrivener, and he was talking about you know writing screenplays in it, which is something I, I've done too. The first draft of the first screenplay I wrote, I did in Scrivener, and it was very awkward for it. Um, it was certainly better than doing it, you know, in Word. But everything <laughs> everything's better than Word. Everything's better than Word. But it was it was certainly better than doing it in Word or Pages or something where you had to you know manually do all the settings. Um, but it, it wasn't like a dedicated screenwriting app at all. Um, so I ended up with Fade In. Um, and I love that app because it's just meant for writing a screenplay. It's very streamlined. I think it was 30 bucks um, on, on the Apple Store or the App Store. And it was, it's really, really great. I, I love it because it's just meant for screenwriting. So it, it's not meant to write a novel and the screenplay. And those are two very different things. So our app is um, what would the very best possible um, pre-writing app 
be. And there's there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of outlining apps or um, brainstorming apps or you know things that kind of help you gel your ideas, but there's nothing that takes the whole pre-writing process as we see it um, from initial story idea, uh, conception to characters and cast and, and beats and all of those layers and then gives you something that is just perfect. So when I hand my pre-writing package over to Johnny and say, okay, now it's your turn, um, digest all of this and write the rough draft, uh, all that stuff, if, if he's taking care of the B part of the story, then this app is, you know, our ideal version of getting that A part done. And I think it's worth mentioning, it, Sean implied it, but explicitly, this is the app that that we want. So it's, and I think that's really different from saying there's a need in a marketplace, and so we're going to make something to fill the need in, in that marketplace. I think there's a big difference between that and saying, we want the tool where people who use this every day, and we want um, we're we're creating the the app that we want. Like this is this is our process. Um, if you listen to the Story Shop podcast, by the way, it has the same name, but it's not like it's not a nine part advertisement for the app at all. It's um, the tagline is better st write better stories faster, and it's it's about the stuff that the it's about the pre writing, and it happens to be the stuff that the app will help you with. But it, with that um, process, like this is this app is designed to fill that need in our company. And honestly, like we don't have cash to just, to just throw around. But if we did, like kind of in a weird way, this is the app that we would make just to use, like for ourselves. And I think that that's really important. Right. So um, you know, whatever the app costs to use, we would gladly pay that. Um, and if we were just rolling in fat, fat stacks, we would pay the tens and tens of thousands of dollars it would take to develop it because um, because our goal is to write better stories faster. And um, it is an app that we will use every single day in the company for the foreseeable future. And we feel like, um, you know, so will the writing community. I, I think I, I was getting really excited um, because I was showing uh, Cindy this morning a couple of Seth's mocks Seth's mockups and just talking about the app. And the more I talk about the app, the more excited I get. And I said, yeah, and she was, she was, you know, because a lot of um, a lot of my ideas, Cindy's job is to just listen to me. No, <laughs> right. I just, hope you paid well. Uh, <laughs> just kind of, um, you know, get through it. <laughs> but she was was really interested in this, and she was her eyes were lit up, and she was asking a lot of questions, and. Um, she said, "Well, that that sounds really amazing." And I said, "Yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be the best writing tool out there for for brainstorming and for for coming up with stories. And it's not an easy button, you know. It's not going to write your story for you. It's not a storyomatic where you feed a bunch of stuff in and you know it it it, it spits out the perfect outline. It's not that kind of thing. Um, you know, I don't have anything that helps me create an outline. I just have story structures that I lean on, and I have." processes that I lean on and this is a way of, of kind of um, streamlining everything together into um, you know an elegant interface hopefully that you know that's what what Seth is really bringing to the table is um, you know you know he asked us what do you want what are the kinds of things that you do how will you use this tool and you know out of a lot of um, interviewing time and just getting our ideas down he's helping to take because we don't know we're not developers we don't know what's possible we just know what we need to make a great story and then you know that's what his team is doing is actually actualizing all this so if you um, if you came across this and, and you like who knows videos are forever the internet's forever um, and where uh -oh. you can the up to date Dave, you got a little buzz going on there. I think it's because you're standing. Um, a little buzz in your microphone there. Maybe he's on ayahuasca. Um, ayahuasca anyway. Joe. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the I actually think Seth should have used ayahuasca Joe for his sample character instead of Gandalf. That oh, would've... that would have been good. Okay, so I'll show you the screenshots in a second. But first, um, if you don't know any, if you're like, what is this app? I'm intrigued by this app, and you need a place to go. Um, you can go to it's sterlingandstone.net slash story shop that will redirect to wherever this is the most applicable place. Right now it's a pre-interest list, so you can check that out. Um, so should we start with characters, be beats, or probably characters, right? Uh, yeah, I think I think we always start with characters. Yeah, you create. do you create characters first, or I know I look at them first. 
Um, not always, but more often than not, because that's what I care about most. Uh, if I have a really clear idea on the story, then I'll start with a, a very basic skeleton first, um, and then move to characters. But a lot of times, like um, the thing I'm doing now, I'm starting all with characters. Uh, Devil May Care definitely started with characters. Um, and then I'll move to a, a skeleton story and then back to the characters and, and back and forth. Um, Dead City was um, was characters. I, I kind of knew what was going to happen, but until I, I knew who the people were, uh, it was a lot harder to get my head around a story. All right, so we'll start with characters. So this that I'm sharing, and obviously, like if you're somehow listening, if you're listening to YouTube rather than watching it, or, oh, so that's actually something... Um, I'm going to make a note, because we should create a short link, because Sean convinced me to record this, and it should be on the Ask Us Anything podcast feed. We'll see if you guys ac actually ask us anything, or if we just present, but it'll be on there, and so because of that, um, you won't necessarily have the video, and the video is important, right, if you want to see the, the screenshots. So I'll make a short link. It'll be um, sterlingandstone.net slash storyshop YouTube. How about, how about Ask Story Shop? I'll make that note. So it'll be uh, sterlingandstone.net slash askstoryshop. All one word. Um, that'll be the URL. It's not active right now, but you're listening right now, so what do you care? So to watch these screenshots. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up the one. This is a mock-up. Obviously, it's a mock-up. It's not like final. This is We haven't developed this app yet. So this is a screenshot of what a... That does not look like Gandalf. ...character profile will, will look like. Um, so... And it's, it's designed to be kind of like a social media profile. So do you want to, since you're the plan, well, I, either of you, I guess, but I, I assume since Sean was directing this, do you want to kind of take a tour? No, let, let Dave talk because he's standing. I want to hear his big, deep, booming voice. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, right, everybody. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so uh, this is just a way the way characters are done now is I'll always, I'll load a photo up at the top, it, it's basically just in the research bucket in Scrivener and then under research you know, I'll have a, a list of characters and each one gets their own document file and it starts with you know, a, a big picture of that character and you know, as we've said many times before, I'll, I'll cast a character um, from a, a different movie or a TV show or something that um, we we all can share, you know, common ground. So we know um, not just who that person is, but kind of how they move, and that seems like a good starting point. And then under their photo, and the photo itself is is specific. It'll, um, you know, I don't just pick any, uh, a, the, you know, the first photo I can find for that particular actor or or uh, character because the 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 photo that I choose is supposed to convey something, um, you know, a, a manner of dress or a posture or, or something that, you know, is, wallet. <laughs> you know, it gives a, a little bit of a head start there. Um, so then right below the, um, the, the, uh, the image, um, it will just have their name. And then it just has what's basically an essay um, for a bunch of, you know, random character traits. And it, it, it I'll often turn that into, not really a story, but kind of. Um, it's like I'm I'm explaining who this person is to you. Uh, you know, the one I just did that was pretty long. I think it was maybe six or seven thousand words. Was for um, for um, a, a character named Cooper, who's the main character in Devil May Care that's coming out. And and I, the way I get that story told is what we call the character DNA. And that's about I think right now it's maybe 365 questions. Um, and we'll probably round that out closer to a thousand over time. And the for problem... every character, you need to answer all of those, or you're not being a good <laughs> storyteller. <laughs> right. So let me let me clarify on that because never once has a character had 365 questions answered, uh, because that would be an absurd waste of time, and that would be you know resistance keeping me from actually getting it done. Because... What does Mauricio eat for breakfast? I don't think we've ever explored that. Yes, we we beer do not battered know. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, he, beer battered bullshit. <laughs> you know this. Um, so, the or problem, children's hopes and dreams. The, the, <laughs> the problem with answering these questions is that I'm cherry picking them. So, um, you know, no matter how I want to, um, 
I don't know, surprise myself, it's very hard to do that because I'm going through the list and basically choosing the ones I'm kind of in the mood to answer. So the way that the app will work, which I love, is it, it'll kind of randomly generate these questions. So it has a bank and it pulls them out and it'll it'll ask random questions. So you know, some of the questions on the DNA are things, you know, like, uh, you know, what's your your most significant memory? Uh, what's your first sexual experience? Um, you know, what frightens you most? What's your biggest hope? What's something that you... Can sexual experience also be what frightens you most? <laughs> yes, it can be. Okay. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, what's something you pretend to be good at, you know, but you're also really not. Same. <laughs> um, so by by those questions being randomly generated, I, I think that we'll have much more rounded, organic characters that, that really are different. Um, but where the app really takes it to the next level is showing the relationships between people. Um, and uh, this won't be for version 1.0 at all, uh, but you know this is an iterative app. It will get better and better and better and better, and we'll really learn you know our needs um, the app will grow with our needs, and we constantly push ourselves. So we assume that will grow pretty fast. Um, but it'll be really interesting to have personality profiles and see how different characters interact with each other. Uh, so it's not just the the relationships that they have; it's how those relationships act. So um, you know, maybe we'll plug it into something like Myers Briggs. So if you have three characters, you can see how in a real world setting they would actually. Not in 1.0, though. Not in 1.0, yeah, and how they would bounce off each other. And um, and, and Seth has a really cool way of, of kind of tagging things here um, with hashtags and, and whatnot, so you can you can click on other things within your Beats package to uh, reference other characters, relationships, settings, on and on. Right, it's creating... Um... It's when when Sean does these, uh, and I, again, Dave's are redacted, so his maybe when he does them too, who knows? Um, you know, it's 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 uh, it's the sort of thing where if you changed a character's age and it was relevant to the plot, then he'd need to go change it throughout and find all the places where this character's age was mentioned, and if it was a plot, which is plot, not easy to do at all, the way we have it. Right, so uh, he's done, what, what Seth is, is doing here in this mock-up of the app is anything with an at sign that is showing in green on here, which I don't know that that's literally how it'll be, but, you know, um, is those are other characters. So, you know, Gandalf here in the character, some, well, Gandalf is himself, but, like, Sauron is the next one in this Lord of the Rings example that he gave in Gandalf's profile. So, you know, if you click on that, you would then be going to Sauron, and you would be able to see relationships between... Sauron and Gandalf the way that you would on Facebook or something like that or LinkedIn and any of these um, little hashtag blue ones would be um, what setting or right let me see setting or other elements I don't we're new to this um, too so I'm not exactly sure what these are but there are other things that are linked and I, I think that could be um, anything like it looks like there's settings there it looks like there's events maybe and I think events are pretty cool I think that the the beats look like they're um, you know they're they're sectioned out by events right so it just that's what I am liking most about this because it you, you wouldn't have to do that you wouldn't have to say well where are all the places where Sauron is mentioned. There have been a few where Sean has changed the name of somebody midway through the beats, and the way I can tell is because I'm suddenly wondering, well, who the hell is this other person? And it's like, <laughs> oh, I think that's somebody that the name was changed. And so trying to do that sort of thing. And one of the things that um, I'm not sure if it's going to be in, I don't think it's going to be in 1.0, um, is we're going to look at things like um, like timeline management. That's not 1.0. But being able to see like <clears throat> where things occur on a timeline. I know this is stuff that Dave has like that's difficult to deal with is timeline stuff and once we have that stuff integrated in later iterations yeah I, th I think timeline is essential I, I don't think it will hit 1.0 um, you know the first blueprints will also be a, a later thing where you can keep track of where people are in settings I, I, I think that this is um, I, I, I what I love about this app or one of the many things I love about this app in theory at this point is um, is how pliable it is. So if you're just writing a single standalone novel, I think this is going to give you a, a really robust pre-writing package. But if you're writing a series, I think something like this could become indispensable. 
um, you know, to really understand your world and see how everything okay. relates. I, I have a question that goes with what you're saying right now, so maybe you can flesh this out. Um, Skipper Hammond asks, uh, can you explain why Scrivener isn't sufficient? Like, why not have this character profile as a Scrivener template? That's what Sean currently does. It's clumsy and manual. Do you want to go into detail on that? Yeah, it's just, it's a lot of extra work. Um, uh, it doesn't, so for example, the character DNA that we were and talking just, about. Sorry, just to clarify, this does export to Scrivener. So you're not working independent of Scrivener, you're working and then compiling to Scrivener. Right, this isn't an or Scrivener, this is an and Scrivener. Because Scrivener is still, like, it is the holy grail. It is, it is how we write everything. The only thing to me that would make Scrivener a better writing tool is if it was truly collaborative. Um, by the way, have you guys upgraded to the new Scrivener? No. A little afraid to. <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty, no problem on it. Um, but, but no, Scrivener is, is great, but Scrivener isn't a, um, a it, it's a writing app. It's not a um, outlining app. It's not for that. It, it does that, but it does it in a rather clumsy way, just like it... This has, this will have database features, I'm assuming, that Scrivener doesn't, right? Yeah, absolutely, and it'll plug into things... That's again, the relational not, stuff. That's being yeah. able to click around and, yeah, exactly. Again, not in, in 1.0, but, um, uh, but it will plug into things like Wikipedia for, um, for uh, locations and IMDB for casting, <laughs> excuse me, casting, and the relationship stuff should be really, really awesome. You know, again, timelines... It's it's intelligent, and um, the idea it'll have it will have templates or you know like story structures, so you can plug them in and immediately start writing within you know Hero's Journey or Snowflake Method or, or whatever you're wanting to use, um, which I think is really really cool. But the idea is it will do more to push your storytelling. So um, Scrivener as it is because that's not what it's designed for, it's passive. It's not, you know, it's not going to prompt questions. It's not going to ask you questions. It's not going to help you think around the problems and, and craft your story. It's, it's a great repository. So, you know, this I'm pretty... Is, this is an app that's basically taking all that we've learned over the past few years in writing and how we've gotten as quick and efficient as we are and putting this with a, a system that you can use yourself. Right, it's the right tool. Um, Scrivener isn't the right tool. Scrivener, right now, I'm the tool, and Scrivener is the <laughs> repository. <laughs> I stepped right in that. Um, I'm the tool, and Scrivener is the repository, but this is the actual tool. So a lot of the stuff that I'm having to do manually, I won't have to do anymore. I'll, I'll be relying on, on the tool to do it for me. Do you want to move into the next... Um... Can I change? Do I need? To, I guess I need to stop before I can actually put a new thing up for screen sharing, right? So let me um, let me see. All right. So that was characters. So here, let's do setting now, which would be a, <coughs> locations. So the way that this normally did it did it go up? There we go. So normally, um, the way that that this the way that Sean handles this in the Beats packages that I receive are I will get. Um, so, for instance, in um, Devil May Care, which is the most recent one that I got, I got um, Cooper's hometown, where he grew up in this little backwater in Kentucky. And there were a bunch of um, images and, and brief descriptions of, you know, this was his house, and this was what his town looked like, and this is the other side of the town where it's a little nicer. And so this is that part of the, um, of the app for settings. And these were things that could be linked to or were linked to in the Gandalf profile we just looked at as an example. Right, so so it's how everything works together. This is way more visual. Um, there's really only two ways for me to do it in Scrivener. I either have um, every single location and therefore a picture has a separate document file under a master folder, um, or everything is on you know one page, but they're just it's kind of linear. It's just one after the other after the other, so you have to scroll through. Um, and this is a lot more visually minded. It's more like a, a Pinterest board where you're able to kind of collect and arrange. And um, so, so we already have that a little bit for the beat stuff that we do in Scrivener with with uh, the index cards. But imagine that visually, that you're able to do that for locations. And again, it's, it's a tool. You want something that, that really um, prompts your brainstorming and makes you 
think and ask yourself questions because a lot of this you don't know. It's not like you have the perfect idea of a location. I mean, maybe you do, but for me, a lot of it is discovery. I know more about the location when I'm done with it uh, based on the pictures that I find. And then the pictures that I find often, um, you know, help me to they reveal other parts of the story. So, for example, um, in Devil May Care, which, again, we're, we're just starting right now, um, I, I didn't know that Cooper was as poor as he was until I saw his house that he grew up in. And I found it just, you know, on, on a Google image search looking for Use places. Use my house. <laughs> it, was, it was an image search for rural Kentucky. Um, and I saw some really sad shit. And it... Um, you know, and then it, it gave me a kind of a different uh, play on who Cooper was, and it made me uh, cast his father differently once I, I kind of realized what his home background would look like. Um, and, and just being able to lay that all out visually and, and really play with it and, and see it all from a bird's eye view. Um, again, I'm, I'm always looking for tools that, that help me think fast um, and help me gain a lot of perspective. Now you'll notice, uh, well, you won't notice. I, this is, I don't know what I was going to say there. Um, I do show, I'm looking at Seth's, um, he had something that I'm looking at here that shows uh, what's going to be in the minimum viable product, the, the launch product, and then the phase two and then later. And um, Google image search upload is part of that. So sort of what you were saying where you were looking through um, Google and you came across, it'll be Google, maybe, it might be Bing, you know, we don't know yet. We need to they need to figure that out. They're the tech guys. But that's the sort of thing where, like, oh, you came across an image and you psh, zip it in. Um, it looks like... Which is amazing because all, all of that is really manual and it just does take a lot of time. So I, I would imagine right now if I take um, just the basics of what I understand about this app, which, you know, again, ha has to be built. So I don't really know all of this. But I'm assuming that I could take a 50 hours that I spend on a Beats package now, cut that down to 40, and have something that's a lot better than I had at the 50 hours. And what I really love about this and what I'm really excited to get my hands on this and start, you know, really digging in and using it is that I know how I am. I know that the longer I use something, the better I get. You know, already our... Um, our, our beats are so much better than they were a couple of years ago just by using this tool, which wasn't really designed for it. And spending the next two years designing within this tool, I think we're going to get really, really good, really, really fast. And and again, that's that's why that's the tagline: better stories faster. And there, I'm, there is a clarification. Seth is in the comments, and he said uh, our options for export will be limited by what Scrivener can import, uh, but we will be doing as much as we possibly can. Okay, so there's that. And um, I forgot that Seth would be in the comments. Hi, Seth. Um, so that's good. Hey, Seth. And um, so let me let me flip over to the 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 last of the the formal mockups that we have here, which is for the beats. And I'm already starting to see how a lot of the database stuff is really really going to be helpful. That's what makes this different, is that it's not just. Um, Scrivener is um, is manual for this. You're you're creating text documents, and this allows you to create relationships. And so, <clears throat> the fact that you have beats and they're in like I, I don't know if you guys can see the sidebars over here. Like this is each of these collapses and expands. So he actually has several um, worlds over here. Like Middle Earth has character settings and beats for Middle Earth. But then there's I love it'd be cool if Lake Wobegon were you know adjacent to Middle Earth like it is in these beats. But um, you got you know this nested set of um, of beats here. So if you if you look at this, like there's these um, like chapter one, and then several things that happen in chapter one, several beats that occur in chapter one. But also at the top here we have where it is. It's in the Shire, and here's the people that are in it: Gandalf, Bilbo, and Frodo. And all of these things are linked so that like you can go check out. Well, Bilbo's in the scene. Who is Bilbo again? You click over, and then you're looking at Bilbo's profile and relate. See, you know, how is he related to Frodo? How is he related to Gandalf? Um, the setting, the Shire. I forgot what's going on with the Shire. Can I click over to that? All of this stuff will be integrated for you, so you don't have to um, keep referring back and correcting things and changing things. Because don't you do that during this? Sean, when I've asked you oh, how you do yeah. this, you go it, back and forth and back and forth. It's really hard. This is the part right here. I, I mean, I think all of it's really cool, and I can't wait to see it in actuality, in, in tangible form. Uh, but this is awesome because this is a very manual process. 
um, with the beats, there's no way to see everything at once um, unless I, I click on the folder and then I'm looking at, you know, 10,000 words worth of text. Um, so it's very difficult to find what I want. Um, it, it's very difficult to, to hop around between chapters. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's a little manual. Um, and, and having said that, it's still the best system out there because it's still way, way, way better than Word where it would all be in one document and I can't click around the separate documents. But something like this that, that's really malleable in that way that allows me to um, you know, expand and, and, and see everything at once and click on a button, add a divider, add a beat, um, I, I think that's going to be really special. Um, and I think it's it's going to allow me to do more in less time. And again, there will be a huge difference between the way I'll use this for a, a big world, um, like what we what we've done for the Dream Engine. Um, you know, already uh, that Scrivener file is almost half a gig, um, which is insane <laughs> size for um, <laughs> a Scrivener file. The, um, go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go ahead. Well, the other thing that's really cool about this is. Um, you know, again, I don't want to share this because then it commits everybody, but Seth um, sent us internally um, a, sort of a list of, like, what, what will probably be in... I was already talking about this. What will be in the launch version? What will come in further iterations? Because remember, this isn't like... It isn't like Scrivener where you buy an app. You, you buy Scrivener and then you use it. It's This is this is ongoing. Like, this is always evolving. This is like... Um, I don't know, Asana, you know, keeps adding new features and stuff. Like yeah, I think Asana is a, a really good example here. Yeah, Asana exactly. has all of our, uh, everything, like everything for our company is in Asana. It's our tasks, it's our dream lists, it's um, it's our projects, um, and we continue to add to it. And So when um, Asana uh, adds a new feature, like, we, we get it, you know, because we're, we're Asana members. But um, my point is that that I'm, I'm looking through this and, it's not just like here's the wish list as of now, and we're gonna add um, physical maps somewhere down the road. And uh, Dave the Taper, that's the best one, like the Microsoft <laughs> Paperclip as the mascot. <laughs> so the, it's not just like that's the list and it's static. This is gonna be this is a, an ongoing partnership between Strange Wind Studios and Sterling and Stone. So as we use this app, Sean's gonna get in and say, "Wait a minute, I wish I could do this one thing. Like this is one thing." we're still, like, our partnership doesn't end. You know, we still work with them, and so the feedback and whatever you guys tell us, if we yeah, hear Yeah, you'll get in that, there and say, you know, I want that, and the community will help to to evolve the app for sure. One of the things that I really, really love, um, and I, I don't think this will be coming for a while, but the idea that, you know, there's there's a marketplace, and, um, you know, because there are some people who... Yeah, that's they, in the later pile for now. That sounds really yeah. cool. But but it sounds really cool, right? So there's I think this kind of thing will make collaboration a lot easier, um, which you know is certainly a growing trend, and we wouldn't have our business without it. And the fact that you know person A can be separate from person B, so um, right now it works really well the way that that Johnny and I divided at Realm and Sand. So I, I make the pre-production packages, and then he handles the rough drafts. So. But, you know, maybe there's somebody out there who loves the idea of, you know, just putting these packages together and building the worlds and the characters and all that, but they don't really want to write rough drafts. Like a dungeon uh, master. Yes. So you could, you could do that, and then it'd be easy in this context uh, or easier to find a, a collaborative partner, somebody who just wants to write rough drafts but hates all the pre-writing. Like, they're not an outliner. They're, you know, they just want to write their story, and, and people could team up or, or vice versa. You know, you have somebody who, who just writes, and they go to um, Story Shop, you know, because they just want to find a package. So long-term, Seth was talking about having a marketplace where you could actually sell worlds and packages and all of that. And I, I think that sounds really compelling. Yeah, not available in the first version for sure, but um, but eventually, you know, maybe years after we have it. Um, do we want to talk anything about the structure of the app at, at all, um, just so people know what to expect? It's it's sort of based on the Slack or Asana model. Yeah, well, to, to start, it it is a web app, so um, and it's you know it, it's heavy, like it does a lot of work. It does um, it does things that that Scrivener cannot do. Um, so uh, just like, you know, Scrivener doesn't have a, an iPad app right now or an iPhone app because it's not really, that's not really what it's supposed to do. It's not what it's designed for. Um, same with our app. 
Um, now, after time, we do have full plans to have an iPhone and an Android and you know portable versions of the app for sure. Um, but that would really dilute what we're trying to do right well, now. Well, the model is. Um... I, I like Asana best, but not everybody knows what Asana is or uses it, so I'm not sure what else it would um, would be a good example. You would uh, be able to access it on the web browser within iPad and stuff like that, though, correct? Yes. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes, but basically the model would be... <clears throat> Slack, you, Trello is another one that, that, that does it. But, yeah, but it, you, it's an emerging trend. It's where a lot of higher quality apps are going anyway. Right, so so what it is is basically your data and all the processing power and so forth does live on the, the web. You know, it lives their servers that, that handle it all and that store it all. And then, in to use Seth's term, the, the individual, quote, apps that are on, like, your, your iPad or something, they're, he says they're calling home to the mothership. It's not that you have a freestanding... Like, if you download Angry Birds... You know, like you have that's you have that software that exists on your iPad. You're playing the game. You're not you're not playing it on the web as visible through your iPad. It's on your iPad. But if you're using Asana or Slack or Trello on your mobile device, you're actually just interfacing with your data up there on the web. It's not. I mean, it might be stored locally as well, but it syncs. And that's the way this the further apps, like the later the coming apps that will come later for this, like Evernote. Be, like, exactly. Like yes, Evernote. Evernote's actually a really great, good job. Right. Because that's exactly it. Evernote, you know, you, you clip and you do this and you can put all the stuff there, but you can access it on any device. But you don't really, like, work on Evernote. It is a web app. Right. So questions? Uh, have people been asking questions? I don't... Uh, I yes. Uh, hold on one second. Seth has answered some of the questions. So. Oh, look at that guy. Seth, you're stealing our thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, he knows the answer, so. Yeah, but um, but people can't see those questions. Nobody agreed with me that I thought Seth bore a striking resemblance to the guy in Ex Machina when I watched I, it. I, I saw what you meant. Um, He's but, got the beard, the, you know. But their manners are hair. so different. Well, no, no, it's appearance. Yeah, uh, I, I saw what you meant. Yeah. Somebody asked about uploading images, and Seth said, uh, when uploading an image, uh, you'll be able to choose from either uh, from my computer, from a URL, or do an image search. The image search sounds awesome, because yeah, that's I the way I know that Sean there. gets a lot of them. Uh, yeah, MG on nice. asked, can we attach sound files or links that will play when we're in certain sections for those of us that are inspired by music? He wants to turn this into an iTunes hybrid, I think. <laughs> Did Seth have an answer for that? Uh, I didn't see an answer. Uh, oh, wait. Um, I'm, Seth said eventually. I'm not sure if it was for that or some other question. <laughs> okay. That sounds like something that would be easy enough to, you know, like what do I know? I'm not uh, a but. Emma Allison asks, will you need beta testers? Uh, the people who fund the campaign will be the beta testers by default, I think. Okay. I think that's the way and, that and what it okay uh, explain that for people that don't know uh, this will be on Kickstarter and if it funds then this happens and if it doesn't then it doesn't right, right. we aren't advertising a an app that exists come get it this is like it doesn't exist like this is we're gonna crowdfund it and we and didn't want to help it. us build it yeah we didn't want to crowdfund it because it was just it's it was a big I mean it, fiction unboxed was really rewarding but it, it was a lot of work. And yeah. so we didn't want to do that again, and Seth convinced us like it's the, that's the best way to do it is to crowdfund it. So, and gonna... it was such a big thing too. It's 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 not um, the the difference between this and Fiction Unboxed. You know, Fiction Unboxed was um, hey, here are some some Chotskys, and you can watch us write, and it's going to be an adventure, and it's going to be awesome. But this is a tangible thing that has to be built. Sam has uh, sorry, Seth has a team of developers that are working. <laughs> for a substantial amount of time to build something that doesn't exist. So they have to be paid, and um, we actually need development money. Too. And if it doesn't fund, it's not just like, oh, well, that's too bad, we can't make our app. We then learned something about the market, i.e. that there isn't sufficient interest, so why would we make the app? Right, because we think this is a really awesome app, and we would use it every day, but it would be absurd to spend that amount of money just for our own in-house app. <laughs> that would be really ridiculous. Um, but sharing it with the market makes perfect sense. And in a crowdfunding campaign is a really excellent way to market test an idea. And we have a, you know, a substantial um, 
you know, amount of listeners. And if within that community, and they're all writers, so if within that community um, there aren't enough writers who say, oh yeah, I would totally use that, then clearly it's it's not a good idea, and we shouldn't go forward. Kyle Morgan asked uh, about the price range. Seth answered, uh, we're not quite ready to go into all that yet. Stay tuned. Yeah, I think we're still figuring that all those things out. Yeah, we we it's just it's just, it's too jello at this point. But but we have been talking a lot about you know development costs and ongoing costs. And um, Archer, our controller, <laughs> got in. With Don't us. you just <laughs> love saying that word? Yeah, yeah, He's I do. Controller. I don't want to say bookkeeper. He's no He's a controller. Really cool. He's a controller, um, and uh, you know we have another meeting about that next week where we're hashing out even more of the details. But there's 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 a lot. There's initial startup costs to get our our minimum viable product, but then there's ongoing maintenance. Um, you know, there's we're talking about a lot of server space, um, a lot of ongoing uh, programming costs for development and things like that. So we, we have to we have to figure all of that out. But we. We wouldn't obviously, you know, be part of something that wasn't of value. So this is, this is a thing that, you know, we, we wouldn't be part of some overpriced piece of crap. We want to do <laughs> that people will use and will be, you know, priced appropriately. Yeah, I will say that the price that we're talking uh, about charging, I would, I would easily, no exaggeration, pay ten times that for the app that's in my head that I would want. Um, the uh, uh, where was I going with this? I was just going to say something and I totally forgot what it was. I love it when that happens. Are there going to be Windows and Mac versions? And Mary asked if this will be a subscription model or if there will be a free or low cost option. It, uh, yeah, it, that's still to be determined. It does need to be determined. I can answer a few of those. Number one, Windows versus um, PC, and I mean versus Mac. Uh, unless I'm wrong for some really weird reason, it's web based. So, you know, I would think that as far as a native app, like I, I use the Slack app on my Mac to interface with Slack, but you can just use Slack.com. So I think Dave uses Slack.com, right, Dave? Yeah. So you can, but if you don't, so in that way, maybe there will be an app for Windows or Mac the way that there will be one for iPad or Android or whatever. But um, the native app is web-based, so you can use it on anything. And as far as, um, it, I mean, it'll be subscription. It has to be. It's, it's ongoing. It's iterative. It requires support. There's no way not to. Um, yeah, it will be subscription, but there will be Kickstarter ways to basically, if you want to fund it ahead of time, you can get out of the subscription forever. Right. Um, and there was that thing I was going to say, and again, and I totally forgot, so forget about me. Go ahead. Uh, Seth says, uh, web-based in browsers on desktop and mobile at first. Uh, native apps for iOS, Android, Win, Mac, Linux in time is the plan. There you so. go. What about an Xbox app so I can like play games and do this at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes, we would love to do that for you, Dave. Okay, thank you. I, I'm all about uh, maximizing the use of my time. <laughs> Especially video gaming time. <laughs> <laughs> if you can leverage that into story world building, then... Um, I do, man. <laughs> I think you're golden. Um, are, there, are there other questions? Uh, yeah, hold on. It's difficult for me to see, uh, even with my glasses. Jeez. Is that Noticing the, the flaw, yes. I'm using a nice. small laptop on a, a stand. So. Oh, okay. Uh, did we answer whether uh, export feature... Uh, to, well, to Scrivener, yes, what we can. To Word, will there be an export feature to Word? Do we know that? I, I'd like to do something that specifically prohibits... You're not allowed to use Word. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we do something to do export it to Word? If what are you Word threat? is loaded on your computer, you, your, uh, the, 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 the program... Or the, the it's like Calvin there. trying to write entire <laughs> books um, you know, on his uh, iPad. It's just like, what do you oh think? You should know better than that. Like, yeah, no, no, don't um, export to Word. It, but yes, I imagine it will, of course, export to Word. It exports via OPML. I just know this because Seth has said it. I don't, know, I don't even know what that is. Um, probably something marking la markup language. Um, so if Word can receive that, I would assume. Like I would assume that that's a rather portable format. I could be wrong though. Uh, I imagine so because I imagine you'd want to be able to export um, stuff to like to make like a PDF, PDF or something, stuff. right? OPML outline processor markup language XML format for outlines. 
There you go. So it's an outline-based format, which I would think Word could handle. Although you'd think Word could handle all sorts of shit that it can't handle, so go figure. <laughs> uh, somebody's saying they'd love to see a timeline in this. Um, that is part of the plan. Yeah, timelines um, actually in in the master list. Um, it's it, it, that's the, the ex actually expanding timelines is marked as a later. Now who knows how long it'll take to get to that, but can you imagine like being able to like zoom in on a section of an outline and hear the things that happen? I would imagine moving crap around on a timeline would be really really helpful. Oh yeah, yeah. as excited. I'm I'm super excited about version one, but <laughs> I'm really excited about version two because I know it'll get you know it, that's it's like version a, six, not yeah, version it, two. It's software. There's stuff. It, there, there will be. Just to be clear, there will be bugs, um, and we will have to iterate. But that's with. I don't think there's ever been an app where that hasn't been true. Jin Holland uh, asks, uh, "Will it be optional desktop only? Uh, Cloud and I aren't always on speaking terms. Will, will, will you be able to use it without the website?" No, I don't uh, think you not can because not it, not for the first version. Yeah, because it does things like image search and it, it's storing your stuff and you well, know it's just like because there isn't a native there isn't a native app. I use um the the <clears throat> Evernote's probably a good example for this. I think in future versions when we have actual apps that the way you normally think of an app, like an iPad app, um, if you have Evernote on your or Dropbox for that matter, you can do this on your um on your iPad, you can, you know, choose that like keep my crap here too. And then it syncs with the cloud, so can, that you can. You, uh, I'm sorry, can can you use any of it offline? Uh, well, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Is I no, right now no because it's web based. But once there's a native version, I would think that you would be able to keep storage locally and have it sync with the cloud. But not at first because there's no, the only app is online. Okay. Uh, I would. I mean, I would. I would think you need a web browser. I don't see how you could otherwise. I think that sounds right. Yeah. Uh, Seth indicated that there. Oh, Kyle Morgan says Seth indicated that there will be some aspect for users to reference uh, genre and archetypes. Uh, can you guys talk more about that? And which bugs will you feature in version one? Can I suggest some? Dale Hartley <laughs> ever asked. <laughs> I have a bug that destroys everything. Yes, we please, should do um, uh, like Easter eggs. Seth should hide some quote bugs that are actually Unicorns. Easter eggs. Oh, I think there there definitely will be. I think we we need a. I mean, you know how Asana has the flying unicorn, which I am so in love with. Especially their new, you know, they they updated it last week, and it's got the supersonic unicorn. Uh, the <laughs> mobile version unicorn. is a narwhal. I've, I've, I've seen that. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, there will be. There'll be genre. There'll be archetypes. There. So we're but, talking about. But not. I don't think that's right away. I think that that's later. The um. The ability to load. I mean, maybe Seth can clarify this, but I think the idea to, you know, maybe maybe they're different things. Is it templates versus like arcs that you can store? I'm not sure. Yeah, and I think that they'll get better. So it's like you know maybe we'll start out with two or three, but they'll get better. And I think that this is one of those community apps too, where um, there will be people who add their own, right? So. Uh, so let's say, for example, we start out with Hero's Journey. You can click on Hero's Journey, and you know that'll populate as you know. Here's your your beats package. You can fill in using the Hero's Journey template. But then you know Libby Hawker gets her her hands on on the software, and she's like, "Oh, this is this is awesome. Um, here's my um, take off your pants um, story structure that that she uses, which I which I love." Which is the name fantastic. of one of her books. She's not actually. Taking off her pants, <laughs> right? So, so she she has that story structure, and then she adds to it. And anybody who is using the app um, can therefore use her story structure because she she loaded it, she put it in. Um, and I think very quickly you'll see that happen. Um, you know, if the app gets funded and if the app takes off, then I I can't imagine the community not swelling around it in that way. Um, Mary Isla says, "How about a Dave rant whenever the screen freezes?" I will pre-record some rain. I think the taper should rain. Well, that's, I, I do that's think Dave. The, the, yeah, I think that's Dave the taper. That'd be awesome so we, to have have a program when it crashes. You hear, motherfuck? <laughs> we have. Um, okay, note, Audra. We need the explicit <laughs> tag on this. Ask us anything. Oh, it's already. We've already said a few things. The um, Dave the taper. I did. This is Who just. Who hasn't been alone in a porn theater masturbating? <laughs> this is um. This is for. This is not for the 
for the initial build. This is for later. But you know the Microsoft Paperclip where it says, looks like you're trying to do whatever. We've had the idea for to have a Dave the Taper as the little mascot that looks like you're trying to kill off some characters. Looks like you're trying to write a book, but Stephen King already did that premise, so you should just give up. Why does your Dave the Taper have a corn I don't know. Accent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of mimicking people that live near me. Okay. Uh, okay, we got... Uh, okay, Seth says, We hope to use some local browser storage, or at least nobody loses what they're working on if their web connection goes out. Yeah, uh, like Johnny and I both have web issues from time to time. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, he also said... We hope to allow simple beat templates in MVP. I don't know what MVP is. Minimum viable product. Oh, duh. I thought it was like a baseball thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most valuable player. I know that. <laughs> uh, somebody else, I, I lost the comment, but somebody asked uh, if people will be able to suggest features uh, going forward. I, I would think yes, we are. I'm yes, sure. Yeah, of I'm sure. Seth has already solicited feature requests prior to this build in the Sterling and Stone forum, so I, I'm sure. Okay. If it funds, the um, details on the Kickstarter, by the way, are where it's unless something nutty happens, we're currently planning to kick that off on the 19th of October, and um, just make sure you're on. The, the list if you're interested and you want to make sure to be notified when that goes because there will be um okay, just like last time Seth early said bird. October 12th so Seth is say. out of the loop oh no we that guy. he doesn't know anything no we had to bump it back because <laughs> we don't we don't have our ducks in a row yet and we need okay. to we need to get it to some people so no it is it is the 19th now and um we just don't bother informing our developer he's not important to the process of building the app <laughs> um <laughs> So there, there's that, and it'll, it'll. Um, there are early bird bonuses, like not bonuses, but there are early bird levels, like we did for Fiction Unboxed. So make sure you're on that list if you, if you're pretty sure you want it. Um, and it's, it's SterlingAndStone.net/slash/storyshop. That. Uh, Seth said we can flatten it out for Word, so I guess you can spit out basically a, a simple doc for Word, and you know, if, but if you're using Word, you're probably used to not having features, so. <laughs> Right, exactly. We're talking about dumbing it down for word. I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. Okay, I think that's all the questions I have. All right, well, that's good because we have another meeting shortly. So I think, what what's our call to action if people have more questions? Do we really want to sick people? Because I'm just imagining, like, Amy doesn't want those questions. She's not going to be able to answer them. Should we send them to Seth? Hey, Seth, raise your hand in the comments if you want. Um, you should you want email Sean's mom and ask her. <laughs> right, she'll have lots to say. Um yeah, so I don't. We'll have lots to say. It just won't have anything to do with the app. <laughs> and we'll listen. Uh, do listen if you're if you're overwhelmingly excited and can't wait. Um, like I said, Fridays. <clears throat> that's uh, the ninth, October 9th, The the live podcast we record that day, Friday at three p.m. Eastern, will be with Seth. And um, we're going to. And talk that'll more be lively about too, because this is really difficult for us, because we're talking about something that is so conceptual, and we can see it in our head, and we don't know, you know, what version is going to have the things that we want, and all of that, and we don't. I mean, we believe in the project so much, and we believe that it will be funded. But again, it's it's all theoretical at this point. So it'll be it'll be wonderful to actually sit down and and talk with the guy who's going to be doing it. Well, hell, and why it, are we doing this? We could just do a Friday show. And remember that it is. We did it a just to watch you stand. We we wanted to see you stand for an hour. Remember that it is a crowdfunding campaign, which means that it's not just your chance to get in early. It's if if you want the app to be built, like if it doesn't fund, we don't build the app. It's, it's not like funded. we're they will. right. It's not like we'll collect half of the money we need and say, well, we'll just service those people. Like, no, we can't then build the app. So if the community doesn't show up, then we know that there's not enough interest, and we just won't do it. So, which is okay. I don't. I want to build it, but whatever. We'll just I'd hate rather. you all forever. That's. All. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not build it and have nobody want it. You know. Did uh, Seth answer been about? Been there, done that. <laughs> did Seth answer about? Uh, um, no, I think there's like a minute or a minute and a half delay on YouTube. All right. Well, just tune into the podcast then on Friday if you want to catch it live, and it'll air during the campaign. That episode will. So it'll the the campaign launches on a Monday, and so the twenty first is the Wednesday of that week. That's when his episode should go live. So in the meantime, just make sure you're on the list, the um, sterlingandstone.net slash story shop, 
and uh, I guess we'll just we'll just be done. And we'll see you next time. Sound good? Sounds awesome. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Peace out.